Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Mandarin United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you are joining us with worship and tuning in wherever you might find yourself. A couple of announcements before we get started in our time of worship. If you've not already done so, we're going to invite you to click the link that's found in the description of this video or in the comments and it'll say check in. And if you click on that link, we'd love to be able to connect with you and, figure, and know who you are. And uh, in that same link, you can also fill out a prayer request, a concern. We want to be in prayer for you in whatever situation and circumstance you or your family is going through. Um, so fill in that and we'd love to connect with you and hear some of your prayer requests. Right below that link is a check is a, a link to give. We'd love for you to give and give generously. Everything we have is truly a gift. I think I pray that in every single prayer before dinner. Everything is a gift. So in response to that gift of what God has given to you and to me, we give back in response to that gift. So we're going to invite you to give and to give generously anytime throughout the service. And then finally, we have two more announcements. Uh, we have our first drive-in worship devotion experience at Mandarin UMC's campus. It'll be in the back, um, the back parking lot this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And we'd love for you to come and join us if you are able to. Um, we're going to invite you to please stay in your cars. And there'll be no bathrooms available during that time. But we want to be able to connect with you, be able to see you, even if it's through a car window. And we're going to be sharing in some worship and a short devotion. And uh, we'd love to see you out there on Thursday um, to join us at the Mandarin, at Mandarin's campus. Um, if you aren't able to make that, we also have a second uh, availability for you to worship with us at, uh, at Longleaf's campus at Freedom Crossing Academy, Sunday at 8 o'clock. That whole worship service will be there. So if you want to experience the whole worship service, you can go there, and that's driving as well. So please stay in your cars, and uh, we'd love to see you uh, in person, even if it's through the car and through driving. We'd love to see you. We'd love to wave to you and uh, connect with you more so than in the way in which we're able to now if you're able to join us. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. You, we're going to continue to be doing some of these. We'll continue to do worship uh, on Sunday mornings this way and do our midweek conversations so we can connect with you digitally as well. But we want to provide a secondary opportunity for you to, to worship with us um, in person in your cars. There'll be more information in the buzz, so if you want to follow along with that um, in the buzz or the out loud, you can read through some more information on our drive-in worship experiences. So, with those announcements being said, let's begin our time of worship in prayer. Let's pray. God, in these next moments of worship, might you inspire us by your Spirit. Center us, restore us, and keep our eyes focused solely upon you. And despite all the distractions and all the things of the world, might you speak to us this day. Amen. Join me in the call of worship with the words found on the screen. I will say one line, then you will join me by saying the next line, and we will alternate through the whole thing. God of all creations, what do you require of us? To do justice, seeking peace, and um, reconciliation, standing with the marginalized and forgotten, to love kindness, show compassion and unconditional caring for those in need. Walk humbly, follow the steps of Jesus, lifting up not the work of our hands, but the power of our sustains our service.
kids today in our worship service we are learning about john 14 verse 15 through 31. so during covid some of us have not been able to see family grandparents friends from school it can be a little scary seeing everyone walking around with masks however you kids are doing a great job but maybe we've felt a little stressed a little scared not at peace well, we have something that can bring us peace, help us feel unstressed. This thing that we have can help us with all, and it's with us all the time. It's sort of like that special blanket or a stuffed animal that you may take with you when you go on a sleepover or to camp or just a night when you get scared. You hug it and you remember the joy and the love that, um, you have for it and it brings you peace well that thing that we have with us all the time it's like your blankie it's your stuffed animal it's like a special family picture and jesus gave us this thing before he died he told his disciples that he was going to send us a special help helper he said that he would be physically gone that we wouldn't see him but that he wasn't le leaving forever. He said he would give his spirit to comfort us. Well, this message was not just for the disciples, but it was for us too. We don't see God with our eyes, but we know that his spirit lives with us, in us, and we can feel that. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. It guides us and comforts us. We know that God's present always. We know that we can experience God when we continue to pray and seek his comfort. The spirit that we all have is kind of like that blankie or stuffed animal. It brings you comfort. You don't even know you have it with you. But you all know how to pray. And that God, Jesus, is with you loves you, cares for you, and will help you through anything. You see, Jesus, God, is always with us. He's with us when we're sad, when we're stressed. We can take comfort in remembering that he never leaves us. We can find peace in that. So if you're stressed or you're anxious and you need to feel comforted, or you maybe you don't have your special blankie or your stuffed animal, well, you do have the Holy Spirit. It is in you. The love of God, Jesus, is always help you find peace. Just close your eyes, pray to God, and know, and even tell yourself that he is with you all the time. And that's what we'll be learning in our sermon today. So let's pray. Thank you for all the words of Jesus. Thank you for the comfort of your spirit. Help us to remember what that means and to live always in your presence. We thank you for your love. Amen. Well, we're continuing on our sermon series titled Elephant in the Room, where we try to deal with some of the things that are happening within our lives, but we don't really know the exact words or phrases or how to put uh, words to our experience that we are experiencing together. 
you and me. So we're trying to tackle this elephant that we have in the room uh, bit by bit and part by part. And uh, this is the next part of Elephant in the Room. And today we're talking about stress and peace. And <clears throat> boy, look at the world that we live in. There's a lot going on. A lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry. The entire world is kind of suspended in this unknown of what the next steps are. I mean, if you think about COVID, we don't know when when the virus is going to stop. We don't know when we're going to have a cure or a vaccine. Um, we're not entirely sure how long this is going to be going on for. And we don't know all the ramifications that this disease has had upon us. That causes a lot of stress. And you feel it. We've been dealing with this for six months now. All the sh shutdowns started on March, in March. And it's just incredible when I think about the six months it's been stress and anxiety and worry and fear and shock and disbelief. And sometimes it's just, it's been exhausting and tiring. And there's just so much of that stress. I don't know about you, but for me, it's just been so much. It's been wave after wave after wave that's battered me around. And sometimes it just, it gets tiring. It's exhausting. It's, it's just tough. And I kept thinking about the last six months, just, just how frustrating and hard it's been. And then I came across this passage, and I kept thinking about this passage about how, what Jesus says about stress and kind of how Jesus gives us peace. So if you want to follow along, this is from John chapter 14, and I'm going to read from the CEB version. And this is from the last discourse, or the last conversation that Jesus has with the disciples before he is arrested and crucified. So we're going to start in John chapter 14, and I'm going to start in verse 25 and finish up the entire chapter. So this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. I have spoken these things to you while I am with you, the companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. Then he says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I give you not as the world gives you. Don't be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you I'm going away and returning to you. If you loved me, you would be happy that I'm going to my Father, because the Father is greater than me. I have told you before it happens so that, it would, so that when it happens, you will believe. I won't say much more to you because this world's ruler is coming. He has nothing on me. Rather, he comes so that, wor so that the world will know that I love the Father and do just as the Father has commanded me. Get up. We are leaving this place. When you think about Jesus... This is the first passage I always go to when I think about peace. Peace I leave you. Peace I give to you. But when you think about the gospel as a whole, Jesus is full of peace. When you look back to Isaiah, Isaiah prophesies about Jesus being the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Shalom. And then when you think about Jesus' announcement to the shepherds through the angels, what do they say? Peace be upon you. This will be the bringer of peace. Jesus is known as the Prince of Peace. He comes to bring peace. And even in the end of the Gospel of John, when he comes to his disciples, the first words out of his mouth are, Peace be with you. All of Jesus' ministry, before he was even born, it's prophesied that he is going to bring, be the bringer of peace. Peace. Yeah, in this passage, it's really interesting for him to say he is the bringer of peace. Because right after this, four chapters later, after he's done with his final words of the disciples, he is arrested and he is crucified. Now, if I'm Jesus and I know that I'm going to be arrested and crucified and betrayed, I'm not going to be full of peace. That's just not my, my go-to. That's not my primary motive. I would be fearful worried, stressed, full of anxiety, wondering when it's going to happen, wondering the next step. 
Yet, when Jesus talks to his disciples, he exudes this peace, this serenity, this this feeling of being found, being having a foundation of something else that's beyond what happens in circumstances. And I think when Jesus tells his disciples, peace I leave you, peace I give to you, he's giving it to the disciples for that particular moment because they're going to have to go through some really tough times as Jesus is crucified and even afterwards, but also giving them the peace once he ascends into heaven. So with the Spirit, the paraclete comes, and they come and give them that power, and they have this sense of, of peace, this foundation of something that is beyond all the circumstances, beyond the things that are happening within their lives, beyond the things that are happening within the world. They have this, this thing that just grounds them. It's, it's a foundational thing that everything else is built upon. And I think what Jesus is telling them is, that thing is me and the peace that I give to you. <clears throat> Oftentimes when we think about peace, we kind of think of kind of those monks that just have this, this awe about them, this calmness, this, this presence of just slow speaking and kind of the methodical way of doing things. And it's just very a calm. They have a presence about them when they have this, this peace. And I think that's kind of a secondary part of peace. When I think about Jesus' words of peace, I think about Jesus being grounded in something that occurs and he experiences beyond anything else in all the circumstances because he has that relationship with the Father. And when Jesus gives us that relationship with him, we have this grounding, this centering the promises that Jesus provides of faithfulness, of love, of compassion, of the Holy Spirit coming, we have this hope, this faith that transcends anything that happens within our experience of life, our experiences of the world, our experiences of things that occur. I kind of have this image of, for me, if, I, if I'm a boat and I have this anchor that's kind of set into the ground and it's dug in so deep. It keeps me planted. It keeps me centered. It keeps me focused. And even as the storms go on and the waves, the waves rise, and let's say a thunderstorm occurs and knocks the boat back and forth and it's battered and beaten, that anchor is the thing that, that holds me steady. It plants me. It's a firm foundation for me. And when Jesus talks about peace, that's the image that I have. That the peace that I have in Christ, the peace that I have that Jesus has provided for me, centers me when those waves come. Now, does that mean it's easy? Absolutely not. That does not mean that it's difficult. It's not difficult. It doesn't mean we all have butterflies and rainbows that happen in our lives. No, bad stuff happens. Life is tough in some parts of our lives. And everybody experiences some waves or the rising of the tides or a thunderstorm comes and whatever that looks like in your life. But what Jesus provides for us in the peace is the thing that plants us where we are at. It plants us in that relationship with Jesus. And it plants us and gives us the eyes to see beyond those particular circumstances, beyond those waves, beyond the thunderstorm of knowing Christ is with us in the midst of it, and we have hope and faith for the future, that this is only a temporary thing, and the waves will subside, and the seas will calm, yet the anchor is still there in the good parts and the bad parts, in the tough parts and in the joyous parts. We are anchored in that faith in Christ. A couple months ago, um, I was outside around 11.30 hoping to take my dog, uh, our German Shepherd, Savannah, out. And it was raining that entire day. And in our backyard, we kind of have this, this slope. And then it goes slopes and it kind of has this little uh, levee here, this little trench. And then it goes back up a little bit and then back down into our preserve. And in this trench, when it rains pretty tough, pretty hard, the water just kind of sits there for a little bit. And it takes a while for it to go through the plumbing and go down into the preserve. And 
a lot of times, my, I know my dog loves water, but when it gets past about 11 o'clock, oftentimes she'll go out in the backyard, go to the bathroom and come back like a good dog. Well, a couple months ago, uh, she was not a good dog. I let her out about 11.30, about to get ready to go to bed, and she goes out, and for whatever reason, she is a puppy, she had the zoomies, and the dog just went crazy, running all around the yard. She went to the, tre the, the levee that we had, or the trench that we had, and just laid down directly in the water, in the mud, and she got up, and mud was all over her, and just kept running and running and running in the water, in the mud, and it was a, me a mess. And it was a disaster. And I'm sitting there on the back porch, just looking at her, getting ready for bed. And I have this face of, I can't believe she's doing that. And normally when my dog gets up, gets, does something naughty or mischievous, I get furious and upset and yell at her. And I talk to my wife and I get very frustrated and we have to eventually take her and put her in the shower. And I normally get really, really upset. But for whatever reason, I look at her out there and she's laying in the mud pit in the back of our yard at 11.30 at night. And all I can do is smile and laugh. And for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, I think it's just a spirit moment. All I could do was smile and I, I walk outside while it's still raining and I go and I play with her in that mud and I get messy. But I have such, this joy, such a joyous experience of just playing with her. And I don't know what it was about that moment, but I think it was a sense of what Jesus is talking about when we have peace. That despite all of the circumstances, the things that are out of our control, the things that we don't know how, how it happened or why it happened or what the next step is, I think there is this grounding in moments that Spirit kind of speaks to us and says, hold on, it's going to be okay. And that moment a few months ago has provided me this sense of peace for the last few months. I kept thinking back, I kept thinking back to that moment of, what was that, that feeling, that emotion, that experience of, why would I laugh at 11.30 at night when my dog gets all messy and muddy? I think it can only be that peace that Jesus provides, that peace, that grounding. And I can't explain it. I, I, I can't, it's, it's hard to put into words about why I felt that way, but I think it was that piece of, yeah, those things happen, but this is a holy moment, and that, this too will pass. This too will pass. <clears throat> when I was a kid, there was one of my favorite songs that we got to sing in church, and we oftentimes sing it in traditional worship, and we sing it in connection. It's just a little different version, and I want to, I want to, I want to read this song to you, the lyrics that we have, because I think it's so beautiful and speaks to us. This is the song that I, comes to mind. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. And then the contemporary version, it goes on to this song, this, these lyrics. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. And then here's the piece. Here's the piece that centers me. Through the storms, He is Lord. Lord of all. Through the storms, through the anxieties, through the fears, through the worries, through COVID, through the pandemic, through job loss, through insecurity, all of that, all of those storms, He is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Lord of all. Might He be, might Christ and God be the cornerstone and the anchor that holds you firm? Because when Jesus comes to his disciples, he says, peace be with you. So I say to you, peace, peace be with you. Let's pray. God, in the midst of all of the storms, 
in the midst of chaos, in the midst of uncertainty. We ask that you would help us remember that you are our anchor, that you are our cornerstone, and that you come as the Prince of Peace, the bringer of peace, the harbinger of peace, that you come to bring us peace. So help us and remind us of that, that despite all of our circumstances, all of our situations, that you are present in the midst of it, and that you are our peace that we have hope and trust and faith in. We pray all of this in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now is the time in the service in which if you haven't already done so, we're going to invite you to give and to give generously by clicking on the link found below. I'm going to pray for our offering, and then as we move into the next part of our music, I'm going to invite you just to reflect. Reflect on all the things that God has given to you and the ways in which the gifts that you are given giving is transforming our local communities and our world. Let's pray. God, we thank you for all of the gifts that you have freely given to us. It is truly grace upon grace upon grace. So we ask that you would use these gifts to help others experience your love, your compassion, your hope, and your peace. We pray all of this in the Christ's holy name. Amen.
Hello everybody, this is Martin Atkins, uh, still in England sadly, uh, but we hope for not great, a great deal longer. Uh, we have uh, successfully done the applications, the visa has been accepted, the last stage is an interview at the American Consulate in London and we'll go to that the minute that we are able to do and jump on a plane as soon as we're able to do after that and we really do continue to look forward to being with you and like you are probably frustrated uh, that in this time of Covid things are probably understandably taking longer than they would otherwise do. Pastor Will and Pastor Jeff have asked me to lead the prayers of the people today and I gladly do that. I'm going to do that in uh, two or three or four headings. So please uh, pray with me, confident that the Lord hears and understands our prayers. One of my favourite sentences that I've used down the years comes from an old uh, Methodist prayer which goes, uh, Lord, what we're unable to ask in our sinfulness or ignorance, will you answer in your divine wisdom and power? Uh, and therefore we offer words, but God answers our prayers and the prayers of our hearts. Uh, so let us pray. Lord, today we pray for your world and particularly in the last few days, we think of the country of Lebanon, oft mentioned in the Bible, and the terrible explosion that's happened there. So we pray for that people, for their future, for the needs of that country, which are many and complex. But we also extend our prayers to pray for all peoples and all places uh, who at the moment uh, lack stability and lack safety and there is the possibility of the disintegration of society. So we pray for all such places today. Uh, and then secondly, uh, this has been a week where in the UK there has been a, a train um, derailment and deaths, and in India there has been a plane crash, two usually safe forms of travel where there's tragedy struck. So, Lord, we want to pray for all people who are travelling at this time, by whatever means of travel, whether the, uh, the travel is one of uniqueness, they've never been there before, or a very common travel to and from work or to relatives or whatever. We pray for safety uh, as we move and as we travel, and particularly if those we love are making long and significant journeys uh, and we want to hold them before you in our prayers for their safety and their well-being. And then thirdly, in, in the UK this week, it has been one of those weeks where people in school, and particularly people going to college, we call it university, have received their uh, examination results. And so generally, more generally, we want to pray, Lord, for all those throughout the world who are awaiting the outcome of tests, whether they be academic tests or medical texts, tests. We, we pray for them as they wait and we pray for them a positive outcome and we ask Lord for uh, their lives to be in your hands and especially for those we know and love that you will steer their futures and that they might one day know of your careful leading in their lives. And then lastly, this uh, past week, two families that Helen and I know have suffered the death of uh, relatives, one an aged mother, but another a son by uh, a mother. And it just draws to our attention that from time to time in the Christian family and the human family, there are those who are going through bereavement and all that means. So finally, Lord, today we pray for all those who mourn, or are preparing for a funeral service, or recovering from a funeral service. And we pray for all those whose lives have, have been unalterably changed because of the death of, or the lasting sickness of those they love. And we commend all these prayers, together with the prayers of our own hearts and our own needs, into your merciful listening and your powerful answering. And we pray these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
peace I give to you is what Jesus says. So go forth in grace, in love, in hope, and in peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding and a peace that transcends all the circumstances in all of our lives. Go and be anchored in peace. Amen.